Are you proving Satan right? And are you fulfilling Satan's prophecy? When you come into this earth realm, Satan has already prophesied what you're going to do. Satan has already prophesied what you're going to become. Satan already predicted mistakes, failures, errors, deceptions, traditions, perceptions, opinions. Satan has already scheduled education. And when I, when I tell you that um, a criminal is educated about crime, a gang member is educated about gangs, a street person is educated about the streets. A person doing fraud is educated about trickery, scheme, fraudulent activity. Satan has already scheduled your education. When you come into the earth realm, Satan has already scheduled who you're going to marry, who you're going to have children with, who you're going to have sex with. When you come into the earth, Satan has already scheduled what you're going to drink, alcohol, liquor, what you're going to smoke, cigarettes, weed, what you're going to sniff, crack, cocaine. What, what are you going to join, sororities, denominations, religions? Are you fulfilling Satan's prophecy? Satan prophesied over Herod. Herod was supposed to destroy Jesus. Herod was supposed to fight Jesus. Herod was supposed to stop Jesus from fulfilling his destiny. Are you fulfilling Satan's prophecy of your life? Satan prophesies your reaction before you react. Every day that you have had a bad attitude, Satan prophesied that day days before. And Satan works towards the prophecy so that it could come to pass. By sending you bad reports. Bad mindsets, bad meditation, prayerlessness, unthankfulness. you not verbally talking with God and expressing your gratitude for what he has done for you. Are you fulfilling Satan's prophecy? Every weakness that you have is a prophecy of Satan. It didn't come from God. Adam was not created with weakness, only meekness. Adam was not created with weakness, only meekness. God's intent for man was not for them to have any deficiencies. The image of God is completely perfect. Are you fulfilling Satan's prophecy? Is your emotions a product of what Satan prophesied? Satan prophesied you'll be depressed, you'll be sad, you'll be weak, no energy, no inspiration, no goals. Are you fulfilling Satan's prophecy? When you experience favor, through a person on earth, Satan prophesies your reaction to that favor. Satan prophesies your foolish moves so that you lose that favor. Satan prophesies your disrespect so you lose that favor. Satan prophesies your betrayals, your disloyalty, your unfaithfulness so that you lose that favor. Even when God schedules good things for your life to bless you, 
Satan prophesies that you're going to mess it up. Are you fulfilling Satan's prophecies? When you get married, Satan prophesies that you're going to do the things in the marriage to get you divorced. When you get um, accepted into a door, Satan prophesies you're going to do the things so that that door will shut on you. When you are liked by somebody, Satan prophesies that you're going to get fruit out of yourself that that person dislikes so that they stop liking you. Are you fulfilling Satan's prophecies for your life? When you fulfill Satan's prophecies for your life, you don't have the money that God promised. You don't have the health that God promised, nor do you have the favor that God promised. Somebody God has scheduled to like you don't like you because they see the evil of the devil. Somebody that God has sent to deliver your life doesn't want to deliver your life. They don't want anything to do with you because they see the devil. It's very possible that you could complete the word of Satan, not the word of the Lord, the word of Satan. And when you follow the word of Satan and you complete the word of Satan, it disconnects you from God's plan. The things that God intended to happen for you does not ever happen. People that live their whole life sick. People that live their whole life poor. People that live their whole life angry. Is it possible that you may be living out Satan's prophecy for your life? Is it possible that Satan prophesied all these behaviors that you have, all these mindsets that you enjoy, all these meditations that you dwell upon? Is it possible can you recognize when somebody is sent of the devil into your life to help the prophecy of Satan to come to pass? Wow. Can you recognize when someone is sent by the devil to initiate the process of the prophecy of Satan over your life? How many times do people meet someone that encourage your messiness? They encourage your unruliness. They encourage your combativeness. They encourage your hood mentality. They encourage your hatred. They encourage your jealousy. They encourage your strife. They encourage and they nourish your lust. They encourage your breaking of hedges. These are boundaries that God has set. For Samson, the boundary was don't cut your hair. For the children of Israel, it was not to marry any strange woman. For Adam, it was to not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For the disciples, when Jesus sent them out, it was not to dwell in a house that didn't receive them and give them peace. Apostle Paul to Timothy, it was lay no hands, lay hands on no man suddenly. It was not to lose his influence by not being an example, but be an example in love, patience and purity. He was showing him the hedges. For Esther, it was not to come into the king's presence until he called her.
All throughout the word of God, hedges was to protect people and the information that God had given them so that it would not be tainted, taken away, tarnished, trashed, but that it would be treasured. Are you fulfilling Satan's prophecy about your personality, about your finances, about your relationship, about your sex life, about your sex life, about your sex life? Is your sex life a prophecy of Satan? That means the person you have having sex with, is that what Satan has planned? Satan had prophesied that Ananias was going to lie to Peter. Ananias was in the services weeks before. Ananias was saying hallelujah with the congregant. Ananias was dancing when they played the, the cymbal. They played the flute and they hit the drums. The man blew the trumpet. Ananias was dancing amongst the congregants in the Jerusalem section. Ananias was shouting hallelujah when everybody jumped and shouted. Ananias was saying amen to Peter's doctrine. But Satan had prophesied Ananias' demise. The day came where Ananias is confronted by Peter. Ananias lies to Peter, not recognizing that Satan had prophesied this day. The word of God said that Peter said, why have you let Satan fill your heart? Which means, why did you let Satan fulfill Satan's prophecy over your life? Whenever Satan is fulfilling his prophecy over your life, your disrespect someone that has been sent to help you and deliver your soul from hell. Whenever Satan is fulfilling his prophecy over your life, you will lose respect for the person that teaches you the word. You'll lose respect for them. You won't see that they, they deserve your honor. They deserve your respect. They deserve your servanthood. They deserve your kindness, your niceness, your patience. They deserve the fruits of the spirit coming out of you. All throughout the word of God, when people fulfilled Satan's prophecy for their life, they disrespected their prophet. That's the major sign that you know that you're fulfilling Satan's plan for your life because you'll fight someone that been sent to fight for you. You'll battle someone that been sent to win battles for you. You'll argue with someone that's arguing for your soul in the spirit realm. The sign that you're fulfilling Satan's prophecy for your life is that there'll be animosity in your heart, strife, anger, jealousy, competition, covetousness, there'll be combativeness, there'll be disagreement towards the person that been sent to empower you to prosper, bless you, anoint you. This is the major sign that you are fulfilling Satan's prophecy for your life. You have qualities that are good. You have qualities that God gave to you. Oftentimes you use them for people that are no good. Many of you all 
have lived your life as good wives, uh, uh, good girlfriends, good boyfriends, but you'll never walk into the anointing of husband. You'll never walk into the anointing of wife. You invest those good qualities in people that are temporal, that don't mean you no good, that want your body, that want your pleasures, but don't want you to have eternal life. Oftentimes you use the good qualities that God has given you to worthless people. Proverbs talks about a worthless person. It does exist. We like to say cliche statements like everybody is equal. You know, everybody, you know, everybody that, but the word of God tells you the truth. The Bible said, don't give what is holy to dogs. There are people on earth that are dogs. It says, don't cast your pearl among swine. There are Miss Piggies and Mr. Piggies on the earth. There are people that are dogs. They're worthless. They have no value to them. You say, well, Jesus died for them. He died for the dogs, the swines. They're still worthless. Even though the blood was shed, they don't have no value. Anybody that lives their life for Satan is worthless. They have no value to them. If you will understand that, you will protect yourself from a lot of heartache. How many times do people manifest as dogs to us? And we use the concept, the blood, Jesus died for them. They're still a dog. Roof, roof. Who let the dogs out? You'll save your life a lot of heart pain. If you deal with truth over religious affirmations. Did you hear what I just said? You'll save your life a lot of heartache. If you deal with truth over religious affirmations. A man could marry a witch. You want to know if your wife is a witch? Give her an instruction. Tell her to do something. Don't ask her to sleep with you because she enjoys your dick. Any woman could enjoy her husband's genitals. Sex is not how you define if a woman is demon possessed. Woman likes a man if he has a big dick. Go give that woman an instruction. Deal with her soul, not her vagina. Life is full of hidden mysteries. The power of God is strong. That's... Can you feel it? It's building up. Because in this conference, I'm exploding. Truth always precedes a move of God and truth always precedes the glory manifesting. If God can't be himself, he don't manifest himself. If God cannot be himself, he doesn't manifest himself. Wherever he suppress, he does nothing or does less. Wherever he suppress, he does nothing or does less. You want to know if your child has devils? Train them. They rebel against you, they have devils. They oppose your rules, they have devils. Don't look at your disobedient child and say they're just going through a tough time. They're going through puberty. They're going through a rough stage in their life. They don't got no father. That's why they acting like that. They have devils. Okay? Okay. Okay. Stop.
Stop cliching people. Stop cliching people. Stop cliching people. Are you fulfilling Satan's prophecy for your life? Satan prophesied your mood. Satan prophesied that you was going to leave every time the job began to give you tough tasks. You was going to quit. Satan prophesied you wasn't going to have no money. Satan prophesied you wasn't going to have a big house. Satan prophesied that. Satan prophesied you wasn't going to drive a nice car. Satan prophesied it. Satan prophesied you was going to be sick all the days of your life. You wasn't going to have good health. I'm not annihilated from that. When I came into the world, Satan prophesied I was going to have asthma. My heart stopped several times as a little baby. My heart stopped several times when I was a toddler. Being rushed to the hospital. And the doctors telling my mother. That they're losing me. My mother praying for me constantly. Going throughout my youth. Having visions of the Lord, visions of angels. Having a prophetic ability that I didn't even know what to call it. Being able to know stuff about people and not knowing what to call it. I didn't tell people, hey, I'm a prophet. I didn't know I was a prophet until 14 years old. It took me three years to grasp that this is why I could see spiders on people. This is why I could see a snake crawling around a person. And you see the python around them, wrapping itself around them. And, 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 and you physically want to go touch the person and take the python off. But it's just a vision. That you could see people transform before you like a mermaid. And then you understand water spirits. That the thing that you saw in Disney was not just a Disney character. There's actually people that's of the water. Bermuda Triangle, a location on earth. Water spirits. When planes disappear in the sky, they're not taken to heaven. They're taken to hell. All the passengers are of hell. All the passengers are of the devil. I had a satanic prophecy over my life that I would be sick. I would have diseases. By the time I was 17, after serving the Lord for a while, being tested, being trained, in Holy Ghost boot camp. The Holy Spirit took away all my asthma. Took away all my diseases. At 17, at 18. People that I was moving with in ministry were bad. Corrupt. No fear of God. Which is what happens oftentimes when people get involved in that church and religious stuff. You don't have a face to face life with the Holy Ghost where he'll tell you to sit down and, and everybody will tell you, no, 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 it's OK. Come on, let's dance and shout. And the Holy Ghost will say, no, you sit down. This is what I want from you. This is what I want from you. This is what I want. From you. This is how you get to heaven. By following every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. 
the time I was 18. Teaching of the Holy Spirit began to intensify. Was deeper into the raw anointing. I didn't start JHM Ministries at 19, 17, 16. 20, 21, 22. Then it start JHM Ministries. Then it start doing conferences. Though I had abilities, I could prophesy, I could heal the sick, do all those things, cast out devils. Didn't start doing any conferences, no ministries. Because you stick to the path of the Holy Ghost. If we be honest, there's many people that, yes, the Holy Ghost started off with them, but they took the detour and decided out of their pride, I could do this, so I'm going to go do it. It's dangerous. Ministry, if you are not backed by the Holy Ghost, you could be destroyed by a witch. You could be destroyed by a warlock. And they could put curses on you and it will happen. They will put vexes on you and it will come to pass. Because you don't have no authority. You say, no, prophet, I got authority to the blood. See, that's where you miss it. The son's that were in the book of Acts, they tried to use authority that they did not have. You say, well, prophet, they do have it because Jesus died on the cross. Jesus died on the cross. They did it. You say, well, prophet, Jesus carried that cross. Jesus carried his cross. They didn't carry theirs. And that's why a lot of people don't have authority. People don't have authority. Because you think that Jesus does it. I don't do nothing, but I could bank off Jesus. That's not how it goes. And anybody that will tell you that is robbing you of truth. The fact that these boys were beaten by demons after they used the name of Jesus shows you that after Jesus died on the cross, if you don't die on your cross, if you don't lay down your life, you don't have no authority. And you go step to a demon and see how they tear you to pieces. You go try to win the war of life and you see how you become a lunatic. You become mad, crazy. There's many people that started ministry and hung themselves. There's many people that tried to step into the prophetic Start to step into the apostolic and they lost their mind. You ever seen a preacher say, I quit ministry. I don't want nothing to do with it. You ever seen somebody do this? You ever seen that before? I've seen it all throughout my youth. When I was younger, when I got into my 20s, I even saw young men that started off. Some of you all was there. They was on Periscope. They was on Periscope. Some of them, I don't even want to talk about that. But they was on Periscope. They don't even preach no more. Some of them like men. Some of them smoke, party, drink. And they, in 2015 and 14 and 16, were teaching some of you. Many people step out and start preaching the word and you haven't been tried. You, you, you step out, start teaching the word. You haven't died to your devils. You have not. And the things that come out of your mouth, it might sound good. 
but your heart is wicked. And there is a judgment if you stand and preach this word and you don't know the Holy Spirit. It don't matter if you see people crying after your message. It don't matter if people start praying the prayer of repentance. If you step out and preach this word and the Holy Ghost cannot rule you when he wants, how he wants, if he wants, if he can't tell you to shut up and you shut up, if you are unruly, if you're unrestrained, if you preach this word, you'll still drop into the lake of fire and burn. There are preachers burning in the lake of fire. They have a special judgment for them in the lake of fire because they thought because they had a revelation, they could go out and start teaching people. They thought because they had an understanding of something that they could go out and start teaching people. You can't teach or preach this gospel if you are not sent out by God specifically. And if you do it, there's a judgment. You might say, I minister to people, I help them, but you will be judged. Saints, you know why nobody can remove me from my seat? Because I'm actually in a seat. There's no bootleg reality. This is not a hope the Lord will use me. This body is sent. If you listen to the duration of my teachings, my doctrine is backed with miracles, signs, and wonders. The Bible said that Jesus sent them out confirming his word with miracles, signs, and wonders. Jesus told them, you go heal the sick. You go cast out devils. You go baptize. Saints, if we are, if there's a big possibility that at this conference, I will be able to baptize a lot of you all in the water that I, I have authority over next to the venue. Beautiful pool. Beautiful pool. You could be baptized by prophet Joshua Holmes. You understand the depth of that? We shall see. But when I saw that beautiful pool, so much thoughts came to me. You know how beautiful that be? You listen to my doctrine, you, you hear my teaching, and now to be baptized with the baptism of water? Saints, this will by far be the greatest conference that you have ever, ever experienced. It will be by far the greatest because simply the glory of God is more intense. The glory of God is increased. The glory of God is more tangible. The fire of God is more fillable, sensible, tangible. You'll feel it in your body, in your bones. You'll feel it in your body, in your bones. If you want it, if you want it, that the Holy Spirit don't violate anyone. If you want it in this conference, you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. And the gifts of the Spirit will start becoming more active within you when you go back to your city, when you go back to your state, you'll have more activity of the gifts of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit will entrust to you a particular gift. 
And for some of you all, it'll be more than one gift. It'll be more than one gift, but you'll be entrusted with a particular gift. Saints, I'm going to tell you like this. I'm going to tell you like this. When the glory get like this, we just don't play. When it gets like this, you just don't play with it. If I was you, I would go even in prayer and say, Father, please let me see Prophet Joshua Holmes on October the 1st and October the 2nd. Please let me see him. Let me be in person. Let me be a part of the number. If I was you, I would go bluntly to the Holy Ghost in prayer and I'll say, Lord, please let me be. With Prophet Joshua Holmes in person. Call my name. Are you fulfilling Satan's prophecy over your life? Don't let Satan. Fulfill. The prophecy of your actions. Don't let Satan fulfill the prophecy of your words, your mindsets, your attitudes, your relationships. Satan is the one deciding who you're with.